just been talking about uh, worshipping unknown gods. Adam disobeyed God. We just heard the singer talking about God calling Adam, 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 where are you? In Genesis 3 verse 9 to 11, then the Lord God called to Adam and say to him, Adam, where are you? So Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And the Lord said, Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? So, as we have already 
discussed. We have seen how Adam disobeyed God's command not to eat from the tree of which he had commanded them not to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Adam disobeyed God's command. They ate fruit from this forbidden tree and this brought about the consequence of the curse of sin and death. Death to all mankind. And therefore, as we're going to continue with our discussion, we see Adam heard God's voice. And he responded to God's voice. When God called him, he responded. Precious friend, have you heard God's voice? How does God speak to mankind? How does God communicate with mankind? How does he communicate to mankind? The prophet Elijah, at some point, uh, wanted to hear God's voice. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? So, that is interesting because Elijah was expecting to hear God's voice in his own way, but God appeared and spoke to him in his, that is God's own way. So God speaks to people in his unique way, in different ways. But we know we are God's children. God is our Heavenly Father, we are His children, and a child and a father relationship is very important. A father speaks to his children, the children need to listen to hear the father's voice and to respond to whatever the Father commands them to. God has given us instructions. God has given us his word that we should live by. Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. God has given us his word. Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So God speaks to mankind through his word. God also speaks to his children through the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, no one can hear from God. Therefore, as we move on to 
discussing uh, this uh, very crucial topic, communion of the Holy Spirit, communion of the Holy Spirit, what it means to commune to or to commune through the Holy Spirit. We read the book of 2 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians, verses of 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14, where Paul is talking about the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Paul, the Apostle, wrote this second letter to the Corinthians during a difficult period in his relationship with the church at Corinth, and some members of the church had evidently made criticisms of Paul and his role, but Paul showed his deep longing for reconciliation and uh, expressed his great joy when this was uh, brought about. So, in the first part of the, the Paul's letter, second letter to the church at Corinth, Paul discusses his uh, relationship with the church at Corinth, explaining why he had responded with severity when he was opposed and insulted by some members of the church. There and uh, expressing his joy that uh, this severity had resulted in repentance and reconciliation. Then Paul, in this letter, Paul appeals to the church for a, a generous offering to have the needy Christians in Judea. In the final chapters, Paul defends his apostleship against a few people at Corinth who had them. They had set themselves up as true apostles while accusing Paul of being a false one. That's what we're experiencing uh, these last days, where truth is being considered as error and error being accepted and adapted as the truth. So, as we continue with our discussion about communing or, or having fellowship through the Holy Spirit, what does this mean?